That's right, that's right. The deck lid is up. We've got some work to do today. A little oil change action and uh, yeah, what's that all about? I'm sure you guys <laughs> are curious. We'll talk about that here in a second. The workbench is dirty from some adventures I've been up to. And yeah, oil change. Gonna be doing a little bit of Lucas action. It's got the zinc in this oil. I'll show you guys exactly what it is here in a second. And uh, whoo, the K and filter. Some people have been uh, a little interested in why I'm running such a small K and oil filter too, you know. This K and filter guys, the one up underneath Goose. A little bit of update action. Talk to you guys a little about the last video, what's going on. Kind of plans for the rest of this year since it's almost over and uh, what do we got looking forward to next year? Right after this intro, guys, getting right into it. Hoo Oil change time. Since I broke everything in, it's probably been at least 500 miles that I've put on this bad boy. It's time to change the uh, brake and oil out uh, whenever I replace the pistons and the rings and rebuilt you know, from the short block out on this engine, I put in some break-in oil. Yeah, it was some of that royal purple break-in. Well, it's time for that to come out and uh, install the uh, Lucas oil, or, you know, swap it out to some of that Lucas oil and a new oil filter. First things first, it's got to warm, warm her up a bit, warm up Envy before we uh, drop that oil. And then some people asked if there's a big difference between a full flow oil change, full flow system, and uh, a regular oil change on your Volkswagen. Well, there's of course quite a bit more oil in this bad boy versus the stock. Stock's got about three quarts and this is a little bit over six quarts of oil. So let's get her fired up, warmed up and out. And uh, yeah, let's talk about this too, I guess, real quick. I gotta trim this back. I haven't trimmed this little bolt, but I went ahead and drilled and tapped through because I wasn't able to get the tension on this, which I've got the tension I want now the proper deflection on this belt system for the Bernie Bergman fan shroud. I went ahead and took this all apart. I tapped the bolt that runs through here, through this pulley or idler pulley. And uh, now I got this stud that pushes against it to allow me to get the tension that I want. But I need to trim this down because that looks kind of crazy. I'm also going to have to order a new Hall effect sensor for the crank. I jacked this one up a little bit during my shenanigans. <laughs> but first, let's uh, fire her up and warm up the engine. Swap her around. I'm gonna rotate the car around so I can get the exhaust face and out so that I don't, uh, you know, get too much of that smelly stuff in here. Set you guys up in the tripod so you can watch me turn her around. She does still squeak a little bit. The belt is Definitely not squeaking as, squeaking as bad as it was, but uh, don't forget guys that uh, I'm still kind of waiting to get her over to the tuner because you know, tuners cost crap loads of money and uh, get her on the dyno. So there's gonna be a little bit of richness, a little bit of black smoke, smoke maybe when I start her up. So yeah, enjoy the cold start. Hey baby, how you doing? Fuel pump. Started up pretty quick, actually. Not too much of the exhaust getting up in here on the hood. Drop the deck lid as I turn it around, and then I'll open it back up for you guys. Hey, it's not that much black smoke coming out. Squeak is definitely better. I kind of feel like it's the, uh, the alternator pulley, maybe making that noise. Let's go ahead and uh, turn around. Get her a little bit wet. Yeah, a little bit. I 
you guys. Bring around back so you can see her in the, uh, the light. block these front tires. Alright guys, we got her up in the air. Oh, it's time to open her up and get some of this oil up out of here. Yeah. Anytime you're doing oil change is a great idea to check for any other issues you might be having. For your particular Volkswagen, if you got something stock then it's not going to be so crazy. But for mine, Goose, there's a lot of extra things to look at and looking for leaks. It's uh, just part of the part of the process with a high power engine. And it looks like I've got some, I don't know, either a push rod tube or, or a seal above it. Something else is leaking. It looks like I got oil coming down. Looks like we'll be taking out Envy again. But <laughs> this is just part of it, man. Anytime you guys, any of you guys out there that got like a crazy turbo engine, you know that part of that whole deal is, is you're gonna be working on it. It's okay because I got a new, uh, trans mount that's going to be going in here that I'm picking up from my buddy Daryl. Let's go ahead and get this oil draining while it's uh, while it's still warm. So one of the things I used to have to do is crack one of these oil lines over here going up to the oil pump to be able to drain the oil but I don't have to do that anymore since I installed this uh, little drain here. Oil drain. Makes it a little bit easier. Nice. Let's go ahead and take off the oil fill. Let's see if we can uh, get that moving a little faster. I don't have any leaks in any crazy places, so that's good. This leak here bears investigation, though. Yeah. It's not bad, though. It's just like something is getting leaked out of there. This is an oil cooler, and uh, I had a question in regards to like, how do I drain the oil up out of this back here when I do an oil change? Well, to be honest with you, I don't even worry about it. I just leave the oil in there. The oil filter should be doing its job, which is, you know, filtering out any kind of contamination that's happening. But uh, besides that, I just do the oil change the normal way. Now, unfortunately with this Auto Craft, oil pump what I have found if I do a complete oil change like where I drain the oil out completely like comes out of just let, let it come out of everywhere crack these lines I don't know we'll see when I've had to crack these lines in the past I've had to crack them again to really you know, get the pressure coming back into the system let me turn you guys to the other side you can see a little better there's a crap little lines over here so now you guys can see the lines a little bit better on this side this is the uh, pressure side or where the oil pump picks up oil from the bottom of the sump so the oil pump is always always has oil on demand like if you're racing going through turns and you know you slash up one side the other like it's it's always going to have oil feeding the oil pump because it's got the pickup on the bottom unlike a stock setup where the pickup is just sitting at the top of the oil or the oil fill or towards the bottom oil fill if you go side to side in a in a hard turn or or you're kind of whipping it through a turn there's a chance that the oil pickup might pick up some air and picking up some air will put air in the system sometimes losing oil pressure so with this pickup setup you've got the oil always or the oil pump is always pulling from the very bottom of the oil sump so it picks it up 
takes it up in a little pump and then pressure side goes out the other side. So there's a pickup side, pressure side going out the other side. And then you got a return line. So there's a bunch of lines. There's a return line coming back into the top of the, the engine right here. This is also where the oil pressure relief returns back in. I just need to go spray her off because I just drive her around and she gets all kinds of dirty. Most of my oil might be coming from the valve covers. I might need to replace these valve covers. It's about time to do a valve job anyway. But uh, that's a that's a whole nother deal. These valves are set to zero lash and uh, they usually don't go out of spec. But they still need to be checked. It's not a bad idea. Everybody runs something a little bit different in their VWs. Really, stock was like a 30 weight. But uh, I'm going to be running this Lucas Hot Rod Classics made for Tappet type lifters. It's got the... Uh, the high zinc in there and yeah i think i got this off of amazon so if you guys are interested i'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out but uh 10 w30 i always run 10 w30 or like a 20 during the summer i summer down here in houston i run like a 20 what the hell is it i don't know hold on a second vr1 20w50 there's some folks out there that are not huge fans of this stuff uh I've never had problems with it. It works fine. It's uh, it's up to you guys, man. Motor oil, run, run what you want to run. I just recommend you run something with a zinc or you put a zinc out of it. In, and it, the most important thing is that you have oil. Oil in the freaking engine, man. Because <laughs> uh, that's the most important part. I'm running this uh, KN filter. This is a little baby, man. She's a little baby KN filter. Tiny little one. This is people I want to ask about what kind that is. Check out the description below. I'll also link that there. It's this one. HP 1002, made in America, made in the USA. It's got a little pressure relief in there too. And this thing is rated up to like 500 burst PSI. So it will definitely be able to handle whatever I'm putting to it. Let me go take off the oil, old oil filter and uh, put this new one on there. Yeah, we gotta put a little oil in here first though. You guys know all about that, right? Perfect day for an oil change, you know, rainy. I got splish splashes. I'm sure you guys can hear hitting me in the back of my head. <laughs> But you know, it's uh, it's always a good day when you get to work on your car. I don't care what no one else says. Uh, get you up through here, buddy. There we go. Having that little nut on the bottom of this oil filter is super nice too. It makes things a little bit easier when it comes to removal. Let's see how much of a mess we make though when it comes to oil. Draining up out of this bad boy. <laughs> We're gonna make a mess. <laughs> well, there she goes. Hey, oil lines covered in oil. Oh, we're not getting any in the oil pan. Perfect. <laughs> it's seasoning, man. It's a little bit of seasoning on those oil lines. Yeah. There we go. Ooh, fresh clean oil going in the oil filter. Nice. Now you shouldn't have to use the nut to tighten this up just by hand. And that should be good enough. Nothing crazy. Don't go insane on tightening up your oil filter. Unless you have a leak. Keep tightening until you lose a leak. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys it's time to put some oil back in here and uh see if we get oil pressure yeah sometimes i'm uh if you want to entertain yourself and you get on the samba and just read some of those forums on people talking about oil and what kind of oil you should run in your vw and holy smokes man those guys get kind of heated about that jazz i'll tell you what And uh, I stand by the, as long as you change it, you check it, and you keep oil in your engine. You know, don't go crazy. Don't put like anything insane in there, but uh, 10W30, 10W40. You can jump up to like the 2050, like I was telling you guys during the summer months when it gets super hot out. If, uh, if it uh, 
you know, feed your fancy. All right, I've got about uh, four quarts in here right now. That's enough to check oil pressure or make sure I'm getting oil pressure. Go and uh, crank the key over. Now, this would be where I would say you want to disconnect your coil. I'm not going to do that for mine because I'll just turn off the engine real quick if I don't see pressure building. But uh, it's a good practice to disconnect your coil and just crank over your engine until you get oil pressure. Better than having a dry bearing situation. But uh, let's see what uh, see what she says. What do you say, Goose? Just gonna crank it, and if uh, oil pressure doesn't come in, then uh, let's shut her down. Oil pressure came right in. Sweet. So I was talking about before, guys, is that uh, I've had it happen where I've had to crank it, like, literally for minutes. And then I've cracked the line eventually to get, like, there's an air pocket that got stuck in the line somewhere. But I really believe that happened because of uh, op having opened up the lines before. So adding that oil drain to the bottom of my pickup makes a huge difference. Now, you guys, if you have a stock type setup, you're probably not gonna have that issue at all because just the way that it's set up. But if you have a full flow system and you're having issues with not getting oil pressure, it could be because you have an air bubble, air pocket somewhere in your lines and you need to crack one of the lines until you get oil coming past that point. And then put the line back on, you should get your oil pressure where it needs to be. All right, that's about it for today, guys. Just doing an oil change real quick and easy and showed you my little tensioner job doodad I did and uh yeah let's uh kind of button things up and talk about what's coming coming soon hmm what could it be so yeah guys that's gonna do it for today the uh the big what's to do what's coming in the the new year is I'm gonna finish the 40 horsepower build that's uh definitely on the list of things to get done I've got that new trans mount coming in from uh Daryl he does he did all the race stuff man like all the cool things that you see on the turbo on Envy was done by Daryl. Check out the link below in the description. I'll link you to his Facebook group. We can go check out some of the stuff he's got going on. But the 40 horsepower build, I'm gonna sell it. So I've got some interested folks that's kind of driving the uh, get the 40 horsepower build done. And then um, beyond that, we will see you guys. We will see. <laughs> see you guys in the next video. Bye bye for now.